Hey everyone, it's TB Shores. It is April the 27th, 2015. I had hoped to get this video out yesterday, but it just did not work out. I had grandchildren and was busy with things with my family. Uh, the Lord has really pressed it upon me that I have got to do this, and I have to stress the urgency of the day, okay? Um, let me start with... Saturday night, again, I had another night where uh, it was like the Lord was giving me things all through the night in my spirit, and I, I could, I can't explain it. I'm sure some of you have experienced it. It's for, it's like he's giving you dreams and understandings, but when you wake up, you can't remember what they were. He's teaching us in our spirit is what I believe that is. Uh, usually he leaves me with a phrase, and this is the phrase he left me with. I have given the children a warning. Well, as I thought about that and, and tried to understand what the Lord was speaking of, and I know he wasn't speaking of, um, it's just he lets me know. It's not something he had already brought to my attention. So as I was trying to understand what the Lord was telling me, he brought this scripture back to me. Now we covered this scripture. I, I mentioned it on an April 24th video, but I didn't know where it was located. And then the next video on April the 25th, I actually went to this scripture. And it's talking about the, the shaking that's yet to come. And, and as you can see, the word warning is here. Just like he told me, I have given the children a warning. We got warning and instruction here, okay? Uh, it's important that we understand what, what God is telling us about the urgency of the day, about the, the time frame that we are in. I can't stress enough the time frame that we are in. God is really pressing that in my heart and in my spirit. Okay, let's take another look at this scripture. Um I'm going to pick up, let's see, I guess right here on verse 25. See that you refuse not him that speaketh. For if they escape not who refused him that spake on earth, much more shall not we escape if we turn away from him that speaketh from heaven, whose voice then shook the earth, but now he hath promised. He hath promised, saying, Yet once more I shake not the earth only, but also heaven. And this word, yet once more, signify the removal of those things that are shaken, as of things that are made, that those things which cannot be shaken may remain. Okay, this this verse 27, we're going to focus on that here in a minute, but I'm going to read on. Wherefore, we receiving a kingdom which cannot be moved, let us have grace whereby we may serve God acceptably with reverence and godly fear. For our God is a consuming fire. Okay, the Lord is talking about here in verse 27 what he's telling us. He's going to shake this world once more. And this word, yet once more, yet once more, signifieth the removing of those things that are shaken. He's going to remove the things that are not of him, because only the things of him shall stand. He's going to remove those things that are shaken as of things that are made. We're talking about, okay, let's go back to what God's been showing us in Hezekiah. Or, excuse me, in Second Chronicles about Hezekiah. We see that the time and the reign of Hezekiah was a time when everything had to be restored back to God. It had been defiled, just as we see it's defiled now in, the, in this world. And... What the Lord is showing us is that we are in the days of Hezekiah. 
Give me just a second here. We are in the days of Hezekiah, and he is fixing to shake these things, these idols, these idols in our lives. He's fixing to remove that. So nothing stands between man and God so they can clearly see him. He's fixing to remove these things that are made, these idols that are made in whatever form that they come. And those things which cannot be shaken may remain. And the only things that cannot be shaken are the things of God. That's why he tells us not to store our treasures up on earth, but to store our treasures in heaven with him. That that is to be our focus because that is what is everlasting, not the things of this world. He's fixing to bring the things of this world down. Okay, having said that, I won't, we've got to understand the urgency of the day, okay? And God gave me an understanding yesterday. Um, and I wrote it down so that I would not, I wrote it as, as he gave me this understanding, okay? And, you know, I've been doing this for a while. I've been doing this scripture teachings for a while. And it's all about what God has been showing me about the Bible and how, how the Old Testament and the New Testament are all about His plan, His plan for us. And He has showed me some things that we're fixing to get into that I'm sorry, but those of you who are not right with the Lord, who are not sanctified, who are not ready, who are not in the bride, those who are not barley, but those who are wheat are not going to understand what I'm fixing to bring out that the Lord has shown me. And I just I want to reiterate that we've got to be seeking the Lord to understand these things. And to have our hearts where they need to be with him, that we may be. In that first harvest, that, that barley harvest, and be part of the bride. But right now, I want to bring focus to what the Lord gave me understanding on. And then we're going to move on to these things that he has shown me about this quake that took place. Yesterday, he had me to write this down so I wouldn't forget it. And this is what I wrote. What is happening now, never before has happened as I've studied God's word. That as I study, as I see what's happening in the time of Hezekiah and see how it applies to today. And it's happening right in front of my face. What happened in Nepal, this earthquake, you'll understand what I'm saying. This is about God beginning his shaking the shaking has begun he has told me the shaking has begun and it began with this and the reason being it is all because of what's represented with nepal and mount everest and Kathmandu. uh we'll get into that shortly but the thing is we are seeing things as we are looking at it in the scriptures, it's happening in our face. And that's what God is trying to get me to convey to you. The urgency that this creates in the time frame that we are in. He is showing us that as, as we are to, the, the bride is the key to reversing the curse. And as we come into that, because it's all about the end times and it's happening now, okay? And as we come into that, it's about the beginning is colliding with the end. That's why we're seeing what we're, what we're seeing in the scriptures. God is showing us in the scriptures is happening right in our face. And yes, we know that Bible prophecy does that. We know that there's prophecies that have been spoken in the word and We've been watching for them, and we see them coming to pass. But this is different. 
This is different because he is showing us that just exactly what he has given us in Second Chronicles, it is the fulfilling. Well, let me rephrase that. It is about God confirming to us with this shaking that the shaking has begun. And yes, we are in the time of Hezekiah. It's about reversing the curse. And the curse, the curse came by disobedience and reversing the curse comes by obedience. And that obedience is going to come from the bride. Those that have been set apart. Let's go over here. Let's look at that. Those that are a chosen generation in First Peter chapter 2, verse 9. Chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people that ye shall show forth the praise of him who hath called you out of darkness into the marvelous light. We are, I can't stress enough how important the bride is to what has to happen. The curse came because of disobedience. The bride's obedience to God is the key to reversing the curse. We as the bride, the sanctified priests, the holy priests that are set apart from all other are the key to obedience needed to reverse the curse that was brought on mankind and creation in Genesis. We are fixing to become a new creation. And this has never happened before that the living have become one with Jesus Christ and become a new creation. It is something that has never happened before. And God's trying to reveal this and unlock this so that we may better understand the important role that we as the bride, we as the priesthood of of now and what's to come how urgent and how vital and how important all that is to God bringing about what need needs to be in these last days. And I'm going to cut this off right here and we're going to get into some more of this in the next video. It's, it's very urgent. I love you. Bye-bye.